Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our second Coffee and Cars sessions here on the Den Stodge YouTube and Facebook channel. Just hanging out with Dad. Yeah, I'm Daniel, mechanical engineer. And Dad, he, he runs his own workshop, has been doing for what, over, how many years has it been now, Dad? That you've no, been working? he's over 35 years. Th 35 years. Time. That's about running your own your shop, but being a mechanic, what, it'd be like 20 years? 40, 40 years. 40 years. 20. 40 years. Been over 40 years. Yeah. Pretty awesome. A long time. What do you, do you have a coffee this morning? What do you, what are you drinking? Oh, I have my coffee here. It's uh, just an instant coffee. Nothing special. <laughs> Couldn't get a cappuccino. Maybe next Nothing time. Nothing Melbourne style. No. Uh, I've actually got ginger tea this morning. Nice. Mm-hmm. Actually, cool Enjoy. stuff that happened. Cool stuff that happened this week. How about the the SpaceX launch or explosion, should I say? Oh, that was a very successful launch. That one, I loved it. Loved watching it. Yeah, but well, you were watching a few other like angles and stuff as well from it too. You think it's so cool? Oh, look! I've probably spent an hour or two watching. Yeah, watching all sorts of. Uh, yeah, it's it's just great. Great to see. It's fantastic. That's cool. Oh, did you have any cool cars that came into work this week? Anything exciting? Or oh, just this pretty standard, pretty standard week at Denstone? Uh, normal week this week. There wasn't anything special that came in. Uh, no, just no. normal run the mill type stuff. Okay, cool. All sorts, of, and then, all sorts of problems with cars, but. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. All right, well, let's jump into the questions. Uh, pretty simple one to start with. We've had one on just if someone's gone out and just, just bought an 86. A Toyota 86 or a BRZ, what would you say the first things to kind of check and service would be, just in general? Oh, just a general service and check over. Um, get it up on the hoist, get someone to, if they can't do it themselves, get it up on the hoist. Um, inspect virtually everything, but, you know, inspect for all leaks, inspect the condition of front end, rear end brakes. Um, generally, a good check over and a good service, change all the fluids. Yep. It doesn't necessarily have to change the coolant, but certainly if uh, you're not sure what's been done in the past, change the brake fluid, change the engine oil, oil filter, get gearbox oil and uh, diff oil. Gearboxes have a tendency of uh, overheating, especially on track. If, if you're tracking the car, um, they tend to they tend to overheat very quickly. They don't carry a, a, a large volume of oil in the gearbox. The gearbox oils yeah. are actually a bit of an issue with them. They tend to fry um, the synchro rings due to the lack of oil, as in low oil quantity in the gearbox so it can't be cooled. It um, Look, adding an oil cooler, gearbox oil cooler to it would be a, a certain advantage, especially if you're doing endurance racing with them. Wait, sorry. So you said that with the, if you just, just bought one and you've gone to do the normal servicing, you would or wouldn't change the gearbox oil? No, I would. Yeah. That would be the first thing. At least check the oil level in it, but also yep. check the quality of the oil. If it looks very dark and burnt and silvery, um, I would definitely drain it and uh, replace it. And this is yeah, definitely specifically a, an issue with the 86s that. Yeah. Yep. They overheat, do they? When you if you get pushing them hard. Yeah, the especially in endurance type racing. If you're doing a few hours track time in them, yeah, uh, the gearbox seems to have issues with the uh, with the synchros. Uh, that is that they have difficulty engaging gears, um, and the reason for that a lot of times is the synchros tend to wear and the selector forks wear, and, and the oil just pretty much overheats. Just, okay. uh, and I think a lot of that's to do with the uh, design of the uh, the gearbox, as in the quantity of oil in the gearbox is very minimal. It doesn't hold a lot of oil, so the oil tends to get very hot very quickly. Okay. So actually, on, on our 86, for those of you who don't know, we've got a, a track 86 that we've got, that Dad's got. Well, we've run out on the track before, but we don't have an oil cooler, do we? No, we don't. We don't. We simply, I mean, we don't uh, do any sort of endurance racing in it. So it's we take it on track days and have a bit of fun. But uh, if you were to do a, a long 
race that is you know whether you do maybe a six hour we have done six hour and we completely destroyed the gearbox by the end of it yeah so like i'm thinking that's like... where we first that's where we first encountered the problem doing a yeah an endurance race like a six hour at bathurst um the gearbox was the mate the only issue we really had near the end of the race probably in the last hour we uh the drivers had difficulty in selecting gears and uh actually after the um after that event, I ended up dismantling that gearbox and having a look at it. And uh, yeah, you can see it had a really, really bad problem with uh, with synchros. Um, and the oil was just fried. It just looked like it'd been cooked. Okay. Really. So wait, for the Turn 86 series though, they're only doing 20 minute races. And do they have oil cores in the gearbox? Uh, no, they don't. No, they don't. But I, I, I personally think they should. I think mm. that would certainly help. And, and somehow increasing the volume of oil that the gearbox holds. And the way you would do that is, uh, one, put an external oil cooler, mm-hmm. uh, gearbox oil cooler on it. Um, and uh, that would also increase the volume of oil yep. by adding the lines and, and the oil cooler, but also cool the oil. I tend to think it will help. I haven't, I haven't as yet done that to any of the cars but i would uh, i would be going down that path if you were going to race one especially in endurance racing add an all cooler right so wait so i'm thinking like even cars that you've supported in the 86 race series and yeah. then they've also done endurance races are you have you installed gearbox coolers on them and then taken them off to race in the 86 series or you haven't done any other endurance races since you've had that issue no, we haven't done any other races since that, as in endurance races, but uh, that was one of my recommendations on the next event that we may do, yeah. that um, we need to install a uh, gearbox oil cooler to, okay. uh, to overcome, or helpful, hopefully um, we won't have that issue uh, mm-hmm. with the gearbox, and we would yet to do that, but yeah. I, I, would, I would certainly recommend it and do it, yeah. Okay, I'm I just thinking... Think- there is there is a, there is something that uh, I've seen in the past on uh, it was a Nissan GTR Australian delivered Nissan GTR R32. Yeah. Um, the the thing had uh, yeah all all the R32 GTRs uh, that were brought into Australia had a gearbox a, a gearbox all cooler added to them. Um, no, hey, that's out of the back, didn't it? It was like over... None of, the Jap, none of the Jap spec cars had them, but the Australian delivered ones had them because of our temperatures here. We... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, so we... we uh, That's where I first saw it. And I thought, what a great idea, you know? Because they uh, obviously had issues with gearboxes, uh, run, or uh, synchros and, and gearboxes overheating. So they, that's one of the vehicles that I've seen with, uh, with an external oil cooler on the gearbox. And I reckon it's a great idea. And that's why I, 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 I thought, well, with the 86s, that would certainly help or probably overcome the issue with gearboxes. Got it. All in, but actually, I think it should make, make them last anyway. We should, we should get a lot more out of the gearbox in an endurance race with an external oil cooler and addition of uh, the extra oil. Mm-hmm. I was just thinking when we tracked our 86, the what we noticed a bit of brake fade uh just i'm just thinking if someone's you know bought an 86 and they're going out there at stock and they're running it on the track because the cars that you have tracked they're built up with like what ap racing calipers and everything so that's not an issue but for someone who is just stock and going track racing 86 what are the the first things you would do to make it safer to run oh look i mean to get a book uh, you, you would change the brake pads, and, you know, mm-hmm. much, you know, put race quality pads in them. Yeah. Uh, so certainly change the brake pads and um, just put um, a, a much better brake fluid in it. You can put uh, a higher boiling point brake fluid in it. So definitely do a brake fluid change before you go on mm-hmm. the track. Yeah. Um, and put some good quality brake pads in it. The OEM brake pads are not going to last on a track very long at all. Right. So what were we yeah. running when we went track on the track day? Oh, uh, well, no, we've got, we've got the STI brake pads and uh, brake system on it. So we've got the STI Brembo four pot pistons on the front and okay. the, uh, 
Brembo rear. So we've upgraded the brakes on it. The brakes cool. are beautiful. Perfect. Can't wait to go to Wakefield again. Uh, that's so awesome when we went with yeah. with Mitch yeah. and you. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, getting yeah. together again and going down there for sure. Good Actually, fun. the other thing that we, got, we didn't mention, though, is the rockers. You've got to do your rocker retainers. If oh, you... that, was, that was the first that was the first thing I did. First thing. Yeah. When I, before I even, yeah, before I took it down the track. The upgrade. Absolutely. You yeah, definitely need to do that if you're going to do anything like that. Or Just in general, like you're saying. Yeah, exactly. That's a must. Yeah. I guess a few of the questions we've had, uh, I've gone through like the 86 forum. And all the questions on there we did answer last week, but it's probably it's probably good to just talk about again. Well, just sorry, I just had a question. Yeah, we talked about not running the car hard. You cannot just if you're a daily driver, it's also good. I guess someone has said that they've noticed a valve. Like, what's I'm just trying to understand the failure mode for this rocker falling out. Is it only does it only happen? or at an instant, or could you have a noise first and it could happen over time? Like what's, what do you, what's the, yeah, how does that work? I just don't understand. Being a, being a multi-valve engine, there is, there is a chance that the rocker will drop out, lodge itself somewhere in one of the cavities of the cylinder head, and it might take some time before it actually gets picked up by one of the cams. Uh, that is that it punches it out through the rocker cover, but it might take some time. So you might be a multi-valve engine. Mm -hmm. You've got two inlet valves, two exhaust valves. If the inlet rocker falls out, dislodges and falls completely out. A couple of things will happen. It, it, it could just drop into a cavity in the head. There's plenty of areas where the rocker will actually just sit there for quite a, quite some time without causing any problem whatsoever. Yep. The only, the only thing you may notice uh, is a loss of oil pressure. And the reason for that is that the, once the rocker comes away from the pivot, the pivot then gets pushed out of the cylinder head by oil. Mm -hmm. So, it, yeah, it, it, it'll pretty much, I would think, it'll pretty much drop out not long after the rocker falls off, which then means that you've got a massive oil way opened mm -hmm. with no restriction on, which means, yeah, the oil pressure on that side will drop or the, the, the engine oil pressure would certainly drop. Uh, so at high revs, it mightn't be that much of an issue, like you may not pick it up, but at low revs, if you do it on oil pressure check, like you'd need to get a master gauge on it. Um, you may pick it up, but it's got low oil pressure due to that. Right, uh, but so it, yeah, sometime later, sometime later it, it, you may not even notice a misfire because you're multi-valve. So you've got two inlet valves, two exhaust valves, one valve's now sitting closed, not working at all. Hmm. But there is no interference with the valve because your rock has fallen out, your pivot's fallen out, and the they're just sitting up. somewhere in the head. Yep. In the cavity there. Um, and the inlet valve is still working. One of the valves is still working. One's not. Right. So, you, you, so yeah. I don't know that you'd notice any change apart from obviously the power loss, mm -hmm. but even that you may not pick up. And I don't think there'll be even a misfire. Okay. That's interesting. Right. So uh, the only time you'll probably say if you're on the track and the rocker then comes away from wherever it's been sitting for a little bit of time yeah. and gets picked up by one of the cams and punched out of the rocker cover or in, smashed into the head either, either way. It'll go either way. And then, you, you know, you could have a, a mechanical lock up by the cam mm -hmm. um, or it'll punch a hole through the rocker cover or split the rocker cover. So, yeah, right, so and this takes a little bit of time. It may not happen immediately. It, it, it may sit there for, for a little bit of time. Got it. So I, yeah, I didn't think about how if the rocker falls out, that you can actually because it's multi multi valve that you can still engine will still run fine because the spring's going to hold the valve out of hitting the piston, but the rocker could just be sitting somewhere in the head until yeah. 
it actually gets picked up by the camshaft and then it will cause a major self-destruction. That's right. It, exactly. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And that, that could take a fair while. I mean, it depends on how the rock is... Uh, Falling out. Where it's, yeah, where it's lodged itself in the head. And but like that's... Said, sorry. There is... And that's take into t- sorry that the pivot. Once the rocket falls out, it could hide somewhere in the head. But then yeah. that, as long as that pivot stays in place, you won't lose oil pressure. But once that pivot also comes out, yeah, you lose oil pressure, and then the engine's going to what? You're gonna lose. What happens then? Do you lose well, pressure I mean, if you lose, bearing or if something? You lose or oil pressure, you will certainly just dest- you know, you 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 will destroy the engine after a period of time. So you you're not gonna have enough lubrication in certain. I mean, the head itself, uh, the rocket gear won't get enough oil uh, and certainly dropping oil pressure is going to affect the whole engine, you know. There's, yes, and, but so dropping oil pressure, you don't actually know that happens until it's too late, right? You don't, unless you've got an oil pressure gauge in your car, which stock they don't, I'm guessing, I'm assuming. They have so a warning on oil pressure. They have a warning low oil pressure light, but I don't know that that light will actually come on because it will have, still have some oil pressure. Yeah, but certainly bits of like certainly that side head will suffer from oil pressure, um, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it look it won't last long anyway. E- either way, the engine will self destruct in a short time. You know, it could be that you're out there for half an hour or ten minutes, or but it, it eventually will. Uh, it's we're not talking days here or or hours and hours of driving. It'll be, we're talking of maybe 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes of driving. Yep. And eventually, it will, something will uh, will happen. Right. So if you've got a valve noise, it's... Get it looked at straight away. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to keep driving because you could actually destroy the engine. That's right. Don't let it go. I mean, even the rocker sometimes can, can dislodge and jam sideways onto the pivot and sit there mm-hmm. and make a bit of noise. Shut the engine down, get it looked at immediately. Got it. Uh, the longer you run the engine, the more damage you will do for sure. Mm-hmm. But okay, it's, so it's yeah. just picking. It's just picking that up prior to it, buddy. Self-destructing. Whether whether you, you get, get lucky enough. Mm. Hmm? If you're lucky enough to notice it, if you hear the noise, or you yeah, maybe, right. maybe the oil pressure light comes on really briefly, and then you stop driving it and look at it mm. as quickly as possible, and install the rocker retainers, and so then you're safe going yeah. forward. Yeah, that's right. You can get lucky, but most of the one engines I've seen have just self-destructed anyway. Because you're out on a, you're out on the track, or you're driving it mm. hard, and you don't necessarily hear any of that. You just, you just, uh, yeah, pushing it that hard that it's all too late. Yeah. Okay. No, that's 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 good to know. I I thought originally that it could just be, yeah, an instant self-destruction, but really, there's multiple oh. cases. Yeah, look, most cases that will be probably instant, but uh, some cases you can't see why and how it could dislodge yep. and sit there. As a matter of fact, you might have two. You might have one that's been sitting there for a while and another one lets go. True. Um, and it does the damage. So, that, you know, uh, that's a possibility too. So, yeah. Okay. Well, I actually think that's a really good... We've gone to quite a, quite a lot of depth on that question and... Most of the questions that we've had, actually, we've been we answered last week around adding mass to the rockers. Um, yeah, it doesn't doesn't affect it. There, yeah, I've tried like, that before. It does. It won't yeah. affect. It, but there's no 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 addition to mass on that. Uh, like mm-hmm. the actual rocker doesn't increase in weight in any way. It yeah, so I think doesn't affect the operation of the rocker. No. Cool. Well, well, if anybody else has any other questions, we'd love to answer them. If be around. Yeah, on the rockers, on your Toyota 86, if you're it's a track car, it's a daily, or even just any other kind of car questions that you've got, we'd love to answer them in our, our weekly Q&A session. So I love hanging out with Dad and talking cars, and I hope you enjoy it too, and we all learn something from it. So thanks for hanging out, and yeah, post your questions about down below in the comments, and we'll get to them next week. Thanks so much. See you, Dad. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, son. Have thanks, a good day. Everybody. Take care. All right.